Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Do you find it challenging sometimes to combine narrowband and broadband data into one overall picture? Or perhaps you notice that there is some nebulosity present in both your color pictures and your narrowband data? Then this video is for you because I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how I processed my flaming star nebula I captured using this setup you see behind me. And in the Flaming Star Nebula, you have both a reflection nebula that emits light in broadband, but also an emission nebula that emits light in narrowband, in H-alpha. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I combine both nebulae and also how I deal with artificial light pollution using PixInsight and Photoshop. Let's go. Hi folks, welcome to PixInsight and this is version 1.8.9.2. Now the first thing I did within PixInsight is using the Weighted Batch Pre-Processing or WBPP script to stack my images. And let me also give you some information on my astrophotography session. So I used the ZWO FF80 telescope at my ASI 2600 MC Pro color camera I got on loan from ZWO. So thanks a lot ZWO for loaning me that telescope and camera. I cooled that camera at minus 10 Celsius and I used the standard global gain setting with the ASI Air Plus to capture these images. Now the astrophotography session happened on my balcony in Utrecht, the Netherlands. So that's a Bordel class seven urban sky. <laughs> so we have plenty of light pollution to deal with as you will see in this video. You can find WBPP by selecting script and then batch processing. You'll find the weighted batch pre-processing script on the bottom of that menu. So let me show you how you can add your light and calibration frames. Now, first of all, I took 32 minute pictures uh, in color using my ASI 2600 MC Pro. So that's without using any astrophotography filter. And I have 34 five minute pictures shot uh, with an H alpha filter, a seven nanometer H alpha filter. And you can easily add those uh, images, those light frames under the lights tab in WBPP. I also took 15 dark frames and 15 flat frames for yeah, both my color and H alpha data. And you can easily add those by using the flats and darks tabs in WBPP. Now, lots of folks argue that with a cooled CMOS camera, you don't need any bias frames anymore, but for this session, I did take 15 bias frames, so they are very easy to take. And I did add it to w WBPP under the bias tab. And for the rest, I pretty much left everything to default. I do want to mention that adding local normalization to your stacking routine will add a lot of time. So it easily took me about 30 or even 40 minutes extra when uh, using local normalization with the 26 megapixel images uh, taken by the ASI 2600 MC Pro camera. So I did leave local normalization on and I think in total I had to wait about one hour uh, to stack the images using WBPP on my Core i7 processor. Anyhow, let's skip ahead and let me show you the stacked images so we can start processing. After hitting that run button, WBPP will automatically stack your images and put them in a master folder. So I have two stacked pictures being my RGB color stacked picture with about one hour of data on the Flaming Star Nebula and my H alpha stacked picture with about three and a half hours of data. If you already joined my channel or if you hit the join button below this video, you can get access to these stacked files to follow along with this tutorial. You can find the pictures and my final image on my community tab of my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link in the video description below so you can find these files. Any support or contribution you can give is of course highly appreciated. And I also give one-on-one -on -one coaching if you're interested in that. And you can find more information on my website astroforumspace.com. 
As you can see, both pictures are debayered and in color, and the green is actually that lovely Bordel Class 7 light fluted sky I was talking about. The H Alpha only contains narrowband data in red. You can change the name of the two pictures by right clicking on the name tag and selecting identifier. I chose to name the color picture RGB and the narrowband picture HA. One of the first things I always do is inspect the images and crop out the edges of the stacked pictures that always show some distortions because all the pictures do not 100% overlap when creating a stacked image. As the light pollution was severe, I first extracted a luminance frame by clicking on the extract L button on the top left and I inspected the edges of the stacked images. As all the images are in so-called linear state when using PixInsight, you always have to stretch the image by using the STF auto stretch function with the nuclear icon you can find on the top right. I was pretty happy to see that the FF80 telescope I used produced stars that are round even when looking at the edges of the pictures for both the RGB and the HA stacked pictures. After this inspection, I used the dynamic crop process to crop out the edges of the stacked pictures that do not completely overlap. You can find dynamic crop by clicking on the process menu, geometry and select dynamic crop, which opens up the dynamic crop window. I clicked on the luminance frame of the H alpha picture and selected the part of the picture I wanted to keep by dragging the rectangle with my mouse until I was satisfied with the selection. I wanted to apply the crop to both the RGB and HA color images in exactly the same way so both pictures are an exact match. To do so you can left click on the triangle on the bottom left of the dynamic crop menu and drag it to the images you actually want to crop as demonstrated here. I have to admit that PixInsight is full of these non-intuitive menus, but I use it nonetheless as it has some of the best algorithms to process your astro pictures. After cropping the images, I moved on to removing the artificial light pollution. There are various ways to do this in PixInsight and in this session I used Dynamic Background Extraction or DBE in short. You can find DBE by clicking on Process, Background Modelization and then select Dynamic Background Extraction. This opens up the DBE menu. I first selected the RGB color picture and under Sample Generation I clicked on 15 samples per row. This resulted in an error because the light pollution was too severe in this picture and the tolerance level too strict. Under model parameters I put the tolerance level to 1.5 and that generated the samples I needed. As you only want to select a background in each of the samples, I first removed the samples that were put on the reflection nebula that is visible in the RGB color picture. You can simply click on the samples you want to remove and use the red X in the menu to remove that particular sample. After that, I use the arrow keys on the top menu to inspect each of the samples. DBE shows you an inverted picture with the black round spots representing stars in the sample. As you don't want any stars to be included in any of the samples, you can move the sample by clicking on it and dragging it until you select a background that is nice and white. I have to admit that this exercise is quite laborious, especially if your picture includes many stars as is the case here. There are easier alternatives like automatic background extraction or third-party apps like Rexpert that use automatic algorithms to extract the background which will save you a lot of time. I still use DBE because it generally provides me the results I like best, which is why I'm willing to invest my time in using DBE. After inspecting all the samples, I selected subtraction under target image correction and dragged the triangle at the bottom left of the menu to the RGB color picture. This generates two outputs. One picture that shows the background that is extracted and a second picture showing you the result with the background removed. As all pictures are generated in a linear state in this part of the processing phase, you need to use the STF auto stretch function to see what is actually in the pictures. 
my case, the background picture contained most of that nasty artificial light pollution in green and auto stretch of the RGB picture showed what I like to see. Nice round stars in color and the reflection nebula that is part of this area of the night sky. I was actually quite surprised as this picture only contains about one hour of data in color. I used the exact same DVE process on the H-alpha picture resulting in a removal of the reddish glow in that picture. It showed me the flaming star nebula in narrowband with the ionized hydrogen that is part of this nebula. The resulting images of DVE always feels a bit like magic to me as I'm used to Bordel class 7 skies. If you live under dark skies, you don't have to worry about this process whatsoever. Unfortunately, in northwestern Europe, we have some of the heaviest light polluted skies in the world. But let's move on before I get too sentimental about this. One nice feature in PixInsight is that you can put the two pictures exactly on top of each other and then left click on your mouse to make the first picture a bit transparent. In this case it gave me a nice preview about what I could accomplish by integrating the two pictures. As DVE is quite laborious I always save my images after this is done. You can do that by selecting the file menu and choose save as. I always save in 32-bit EXIF files. These files are big, but they are of the best quality. One of the biggest revolutions in PixInsight was the launch of RC Astro's Blur Exterminator. If you have it, you can find it under All Processes and select Blur Exterminator. RC stands for Russell Croman, a freelance engineer from Austin, Texas. Blur Exterminator is not part of PixInsight and can be bought separately on the website of RC Astro. You can find the link in the video description below. If you have version 2 like me, it is recommended to use it early on in your processing when your pictures are still in a linear state and before any noise reduction is applied. If you're following along with this tutorial and you don't have Blur Exterminator, don't worry. You can simply move on to the next step. For the RGB picture, I chose to sharpen my stars by 0.25 without adjusting the halos. As for the non-stellar adjustments menu, I chose to sharpen the reflection nebula in the picture by 0.25. I dragged the triangle of the Blur Exterminator menu onto the picture to run BX. Running Blur Exterminator on my data acquired with the 26 megapixel camera took a couple of minutes for each of the pictures. You can always use the arrow keys on the top left menu to move back and forth to see the actual changes in the picture before and after executing a new step in PixInsight. In this case I was satisfied as the stars and the nebula looked a bit sharper. For the H-alpha narrowband picture I chose not to apply any sharpening of the stars whatsoever as we are going to use the color stars in the final picture and not the stars of this narrowband picture. For the non-stellar nebula I chose a sharpening of 0.35. I used a bit of trial and error for all my pictures to see what works best. Running Blur Exterminator on my H-alpha picture resulted in a somewhat sharper structure of the emission nebula, but Blur Exterminator had the best impact on my RGB picture. As a next step, let's reduce the background noise in both my pictures. To do so, you first have to create a mask to protect the stars and the nebulosity in your pictures. Star masks in PixInsight are generally most effective when used in a non-linear state, so let me show you how to do that. First, I created a luminance picture by selecting my RGB picture and by clicking on the luminance extraction icon on the top left. This creates a luminance mask of the picture in a linear state. To get this picture to a non-linear state, we have to apply a screen transfer function to the picture. To do so, we need to select the screen transfer function which can be found under all processes. Moreover, 
we also need the histogram transfer process, which can be found in the All Processes menu as well. You can use the nuclear button on the screen transfer function to stretch your image. Note that this stretch is not actually applied to the picture, but it's a kind of preview of what the picture will look like in its non-linear state. To actually perform the stretch, you need to drag the triangle at the bottom left of the screen transfer menu to the bottom menu of the histogram transformation menu, so an actual transformation can be applied. By increasing the number to 50 or so in the top left box of the histogram transfer function, you can actually see what kind of transformation will be applied to the picture. Now, you need to click on the square at the bottom of the menu of the histogram transfer function to actually apply that change to the picture. Now, the luminance picture is in a so-called non-linear state. We are going to use this picture as a mask for the RGB picture but I always apply an extra curve transformation first, which can be found in the All Processes menu. You can put the curve transformation in preview mode by clicking on the little round icon at the bottom of that menu. Now you can play around with the RGBK curve to stretch the nebula and the stars while reducing the background to black. Once you are satisfied, you can apply that change by clicking on the square at the bottom of the menu. Now you have created your very first mask. Let's rename this picture to mask by right clicking on the name of the picture and using the identifier. Next, you need to drag the mask to the left bar of the RGB picture like this. Now the mask is actually applied to the picture and by selecting Ctrl K you can actually see how the mask will be applied with red being the area that is protected. In its current form the background is protected so we need to reverse the mask. You can do that by clicking on the mask menu and select invert mask. Now you can see that the stars and the nebula are protected whereas the background is not. As a final step, we're going to apply the noise reduction using multi-scale linear transform that can be found and selected in the All Processes menu of PixInside. There's a lot that can be said about multi-scale linear transform, but for this tutorial, let me simply show you my default settings, which work very well for most of my astro pictures. I generally use four layers with the first one at a threshold of three, an amount of 0.5 and three iterations. The second layer is at a threshold of two with an amount of 0.5 and two iterations. The third one is at one at 0.5 with two iterations. And the final one is 0.5 at 0.5 and one iteration. As we have a color picture, I changed the target at the bottom of the menu to RGBK and dragged the rectangle at the bottom left of the menu onto the picture. Now the noise reduction is applied and you can see a much smoother background when comparing before and after results using the arrow keys. I used the exact same procedure to create a mask for my HA picture and I also applied that same multi-scale linear transform setting to the background of that picture. Again, this resulted in a much smoother background. Your pictures need to be transformed into a so-called non-linear state at some point to integrate the two pictures and make some final adjustments. To do so, we need the screen transfer function and the histogram transformation menus again, like we did before when creating the masks for the noise reduction. Let's start with the RGB picture and use the nuclear icon again on the screen transfer function menu to create a preview of the stretched RGB picture. Now we drag that triangle again from the screen transfer function menu to the bottom of the histogram transformation menu. Before creating a non-linear picture, I always check what the picture will look like in the histogram transformation menu. 
By increasing the number of the top left box to about 100, you can see the histogram transformation in more detail. By clicking on the round button on the bottom of the menu, you can open up a preview window to see what your resulting picture will look like and adjust the settings by dragging the points on the histogram. When you like the result, just hit the square and your picture will now be in a non-linear state. I performed the exact same steps to get the HA picture to a non-linear state as well. After stretching the images to a non-linear state, I always save them in a separate folder and I often name that folder non-linear. In this way, I can keep the linear pictures separate from the non-linear pictures. I always save the files in EXIF 32-bit files. As a next step, I use Starnet 2 to remove the stars from the HA picture because in the final picture, I only want to use the stars of the broadband RGB picture. Starnet is a very useful and free third-party app you can download and integrate into PixInsight. I'll put a link to Starnet 2 in the video description below so you can find out more info on how to download and install that app. Once installed, you will find Starnet in the All Processes menu. It is very easy to use Starnet 2. Just click on the triangle at the bottom left of the menu and drag it onto the HA picture. After Starnet 2 is done, you'll see that most of the stars are removed from the picture. I clicked on Create Star Mask, which holds the HA stars, but I will not be using it. When looking at the starless picture, there are some small artifacts caused by the star removal process. If you want to remove these artifacts, you can use Clone Stamp. It's not as good as the healing brush in Photoshop, but it does its job well enough. Clone Stamp can be opened in the All Processes menu and shows you a menu in which you can adjust the radius of the Clone Stamp, the softness and the opacity. To use Clone Stamp, you need to press Ctrl and left click on a part of the picture you want to clone, and then move your mouse to the artifact you want to remove, and then left click again. This will replace the artifact with a clone from the area you selected. I used Clone Stamp to remove some artifacts. After you're done, you need to click on the green check mark to apply all the changes you've made. Don't forget this, as you will have to restart the whole process again. After removing the artifacts, I made some final changes to enhance the starless picture. First, I created a new luminance mask. This time, as the picture is already in a non-linear state, you can directly use the mask. I did apply some curve transformation so the mask would cover the nebula and not the background. Using the preview mode, you can actually left click on the picture to see where the nebula is situated on the curve. After applying curve transformation, I added the mask to the starless picture and inverted the mask to protect the nebula. I then ran another multi-scale linear transform to smoothen the background once more using the same settings. With the nebula still protected by the mask, I performed another curve transformation to darken the background and bring out the nebula.
With the mask protecting the background, I selected HDR transform in the All Processes menu, experimented a bit and finally applied a 7 layered transform with one iteration and to lightness checked on to bring out a bit more detail in the nebula. After I was happy with the final result, I removed the mask and saved the HA starless picture. The non-linear RGB picture already looks quite acceptable and dynamic background extraction already did a good job of eliminating much of the light pollution. However, to ensure your colors are correctly balanced, you need to take a couple of extra steps in FixInsight. As a first step, I used the background neutralization process to ensure my background is completely free of any remaining color gradients. To do so, I selected the background neutralization process in the All Processes menu. To use it correctly, you first need to create a preview or sample of the background. You can do that by clicking on the white preview sheet icon in the top menu of PixInsight. After that, you can select a small section in your picture that represents the background and drag your mouse to actually select that part. With the many stars in this picture, this is not easy but I selected a small part of the background. Next, I selected this preview, which is named Preview 1, in the drop-down box of the background neutralization process and clicked on the square to actually run that process. This transformed the background to a nice neutral dark gray color. As a next step, I also wanted to make sure that the stars and the reflection nebula in the picture are correctly color balanced. To check this, I created a second preview using the sheet icon again, and I selected a large part of the reflection nebula and the stars as a sample of the colors in my picture. After that, I opened color calibration, which can be found in the All Processes menu. Using the first drop-down box of that process, I selected Preview 2 I just created and in the second Preview box I selected Preview 1 as a sample of the background. I then run color calibration and it resulted in a better color balanced picture with less green gradients caused by the street lights and other artificial light pollution in my urban area. I was happy with this result and I deleted Preview 1 and Preview 2 that can be found on the left of the RGB picture. Upon close inspection I still found a bit of green gradients in the picture. For me it is hard to tell if this represents actual colors of the night sky or maybe it is a leftover of the artificial light pollution. To completely remove most of the dominant green in your picture you can use a process called SCNR, which can be found in the All Processes menu. To use SCNR, simply open that process, select green and drag the triangle of the process to the picture. With an amount of 1, this will remove most, if not all, of the green gradients in your picture. You can play around with the amount and compare results if you want. As I was happy with this, I decided to keep the picture with SCNR applied and moved on to Starnet 2. As discussed before, Starnet 2 is a free add-on process that can be integrated with PixInsight to create a starless picture. You can find a link to Starnet 2 in the video description below. In PixInsight, Starnet 2 can be found in the All Processes menu. Leaving all settings to default, I did select the Create Star Mask option to create a picture that will contain the RGB stars, which I do want to include in the final picture. 
I dragged the rectangle from the StarNet2 menu to the picture to run StarNet2. And I have to say with a 26 megapixel picture, it did take some time, even though I used my graphics card to accelerate the process. After StarNet2 was done, most of the stars were separated in a star mask with some artifacts remaining in the stardust picture of the broadband reflection nebula. I first saved the star mask as a separate picture in XC format and 32 bit. After the star mask was saved, I used clone stamp again to remove some of the artifacts present in the starless picture. To use clone stamp, you need to select the picture and control left click on an area you do want to clone, drag it to the artifact you want to remove and then left click again. After you're happy with the results, you need to click on the green check mark to finalize your changes. Next, I wanted to reduce the background in the starless picture like we did before. So I created a luminance mask using the extract L icon again on the top left menu in PixInsight. I then used the curve transformation process to differentiate the dark background from the reflection nebula some more and then I applied it as a mask to protect the nebula. I used multi-scale linear transform again to see if that would smoothen the background, leaving it to my default settings as we discussed earlier in the tutorial. That did remove some of the noise. Keep in mind that this picture only contains one hour of data. The best way to reduce noise is to have a longer integration time when imaging, but the weather in Northwest Europe doesn't always cooperate. I performed the final curve transformation on the starless picture to darken the background and bring out the reflection nebula. After that, I attempted to integrate the starless RGB picture containing the reflection nebula with the HA picture that shows the emission nebula. One of the easiest ways to accomplish this in PixInsight is to use a script named NVRGB Combination. You can find it in the script menu under Utilities. Using this script, I selected the starless RGB picture in the drop-down menu stating RGB source image and I selected the HA picture for the red HA channel. As I used a 7 nanometer H alpha filter, I left the bandwidth to 7 and my image scale was around 1.3 and I actually left it to the default 1.2 here. I checked linked STF as this gave me the best results and I checked nonlinear as both images are in a nonlinear state. I clicked on the NBRGB box to start the integration process. The script will run and try to fit the data of the HA picture with the RGB picture. And in this case, it produced a picture that was acceptable. One easy way to integrate your RGB stars with the nebula is by using PixelMath. You can find PixelMath under all processes. Within PixelMath, you can first click on the expression editor and select the NBRGB combination picture you just created, add a plus sign, and then select the RGB star mask. After that, click OK and open the destination menu. In that menu, you can select create new image and select RGB color in the color space. 
Now, all you have to do is hit the square to run that process and PixelMath will integrate the stars with the starless image for you, creating a new picture, which actually looks quite nice. My personal opinion is that PixInsight has some of the best algorithms to process astro pictures and I just showed you some processes I personally use to edit my pictures. At the same time, everything in PixInsight does feel very automated to me as a user and I don't really feel a, a connection when running these processes like I do when using Photoshop. Let me show you what I mean by actually using Photoshop to perform these same final steps to integrate the nebula and the stars. To export the pictures to Photoshop, you first need to save them as a 16-bit TIFF file. This is easily done by going to File, click on Save As, select TIFF as a format and then select 16-bit for the RGB starless picture, the HA picture and the RGB star mask. I exported the total of four photos to Photoshop being the starless HA picture, the color picture with the nebula and the stars integrated, a starless picture of the reflection nebula and the star mask. Now, one of the best things about Photoshop is that you can use different layers to integrate your pictures. So I first copied the starless picture of the reflection nebula onto the starless HA picture of the nebula using Ctrl C and Ctrl V. After that, I selected Lighten, which already worked quite well to integrate the reflection nebula on top of the HA nebula picture. To further enhance the reflection nebula, I created the layer mask in the reflection nebula layer by clicking on the layer icon at the bottom right in Photoshop. I then copied that picture of the starless reflection nebula in that new layer mask by selecting the reflection nebula in the original picture using Ctrl C, so copy, and then I alt left clicked on the layer mask and then I pressed Ctrl V, so I pasted that picture in the layer mask. The layer mask works in a similar way as the masks used in PixInsight. The black area is protected, whereas the white area is selected and can be manipulated. I used the brush tool by pressing B, and similar to Clone Stamp, I used the brush tool to paint the whole background black, except for the Reflection Nebula, which I wanted to integrate with the HA picture. With the layer mask applied, the Reflection Nebula didn't pop out of the picture, so I selected Curves under Image Adjustment to bring out the Reflection Nebula again. What I like most about Photoshop is that you can always see these changes you make in real time. Some modules in PixInsight also offer a real time preview, but a lot of processes don't. And this makes the whole processing experience in PixInsight a little bit less exciting. I also selected Brightness and Contrast under Image and Adjustments and I manipulated the brightness of the nebula a bit. After that, I applied a bit of surface blur by selecting filter, blur and surface blur. Again, with Photoshop, you can experiment in real time until you're satisfied with the result. And this is what makes processing a lot of fun. I ended up using a radius of five and a threshold of 10 for surface blur. After I was satisfied with this result, I copy pasted the RGB star mask on top of the other layers and selected Lighten again. This produced a nice integrated picture, but I noticed that some of the biggest stars showed some artifacts. And this is more often the case when using StarNet 2 with big stars. 
I therefore decided not to use this particular star mask and instead I copy pasted the RGB picture that still contained the original stars and the reflection nebula in the picture. I selected lighten again and this produced a better but brighter picture. I therefore selected curves to manipulate the picture again to get a darker background. Obviously there are numerous ways to integrate an H-alpha with an RGB color picture and I hope that this video gave you some insight into the options you have when using PixInsight and Photoshop. If you join the YouTube channel by clicking on the join button below this video, you can download the photos yourself and follow along with this tutorial and experiment yourself. Also, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching or some advice, I'm open to that as well. You can find more information on my website astroformspace.com or you can send me an email to astroforumlife at gmail.com and we can get in touch. All right. Take care and see you in the next video.